Fell apart, but I'm still standing like huh? Testimony of Joshua and the commandments like Fell apart Give me Hebrews chapter 11 verse 25 Bring it out This is the book of Hebrews chapter 11 Verse 25 Go to 24 first 24. Verse 24 By faith Moses when he, was, when he was come to years That means that when he grew up When he was a child Now we're talking about traditions and things like that Stuff that's laid into your hands Alright So this was laid into Moses' hands He didn't understand what was going on Because he was a baby when he was found So go ahead read. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter Now the Bible says that he was called the son of Pharaoh's daughter because she found him in the river. The word Moses comes from the Hebrew word Masha, and it means drawn out or drawn from. And that's exactly what he, what, what he was. You're going to learn that in the Bible, all of these names have meanings. There's a reason why they gave them, why these names were given to them. Not only was Moses drawn from the water, but he also drew the nation of Israel out of bondage. Right. That's why he has the name Moses. But read, keep reading. Verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High. Go ahead. Then to empty the pleasures of sin. To enjoy. To enjoy the pleasures of sin. So the Bible is letting us know that sin can be pleasurable. Now, watch this. When that Christmas tradition was thrown up in your hands, the reason why you didn't reject it, because you liked those Christmas lights. You liked getting gifts. You liked singing those songs and all that foolishness. Okay? But you didn't know no better then. Right. So who didn't want who didn't want a gingerbread cookie? Who didn't want one? Who didn't want to have that tree and run downstairs and get a gift from up under it? So we were enjoying the pleasures of sin. And that's the reason why tradition has such an effect on us. So we have to understand these things and not fall into traditions, but understand the things that's given to us. Read on, go back to the traditions, Colossians. This is the, we're in the book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8. After the tradition of men. So after, so if the Bible says, beware lest any man spoil you, that means take you captive through foolish wisdom and vain deceit. Vain deceit, meaning the vernacular to say empty prosperity. Go ahead. After the tradition of after men. The traditions, which means stuff that's stupidness that's just laid into our hands. Read. Of men. Me? After the rudiments. After the rudiments of the world. Now what does rudiments mean? The word rudiment comes from the Greek word stoichion. And the Greek word stoichion, it means to follow after the worldly things. Okay, the rudiments of this world is the things of this world. That's the rudiments of this world. And we're following after the things of this world. Everything we see out here, we want some of it. And we don't need all of these things. The Bible teaches us, this brother that was just that's standing behind me, he just brought out a dietary law right. that the Bible gives us. But now, in captivity, we're not exactly able to keep all of these dietary laws as best as we need to. Because you got things like cookies that got all kinds of chemicals and pork in it. That's the reason why the Bible says you will eat poison. The Bible says you will eat poison, it will not harm you. Because the fact of the matter is, every day we still eating poison as much as we try to eat clean. Because it's in everything. The white man has polluted this earth in every shape, form, and fashion. That's right. Okay? So, that's the reason why the Bible, Jesus Christ, the man that you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahushua, he gave us grace. That grace does not mean that we're supposed to do anything that we want to. Grace is unmerited favor that is given to us when we can't do something. That's right. It's only when we can't do. Because the Bible says, to him who knows to do right and does not, it is sin. Okay. Okay, so read on. 
and not after Mashiach Yehawashai, and not after Christ. Now, every time you see the word Christ, it does not necessarily mean Mashiach Yehawashai. So let's get an understanding of what this means. It said, after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. What does the word Christ mean? The word Christ is coming from a Hebrew word, which is Mashiach. And the word Mashiach means anointed or anointing. So the Bible is saying that we're following after the rudiments of this world and not after the anointing. Where is the anointing? Where does the anointing come from? Go to John chapter, uh, chapter 14, verse 26. This is the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6. 26. 26. But the comforter... But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. What? It says the, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Go ahead. He shall teach you all things. That's right. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Bring all things to your remembrance. What things? Whosoever, whatsoever, whatsoever I have said unto you. So that's the reason why we understand this Bible. I just want to say a little something real quick about the Egyptologists. That's right. You got Egyptologists out here. Oh, they, yeah. they know things. Let me bring something out to you on the Egyptologists. Now, when you look at these Egyptologists, they'll say things like, well, you know, the, the writings on our wall, they predate your Bible. Their writings was before the Bible. Guess what? You are right. They do predate our Bible. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. The reason why, go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 14. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring the it book up. of Ezekiel, chapter 36, and verse 14. Therefore, shall thou devour men. Wait a minute, no. Okay, so the Bible, the Bible, Ezekiel, go ahead and read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 26. A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit. So the Bible says he will give us a new heart and a new spirit. The Bible, in the Bible, when you see the word heart, it's talking about your mind. It's talking about your mind. That's what it's talking about. So he's going to set in our minds what he wants. Right. The reason why your stuff predates ours, Egyptologists, is because, excuse the expression, but your asses were too dumb to remember anything. Right. So you had to write it on the walls. That's right. When Adam walked the earth, he didn't need to write nothing down. That's right. The Bible says, go to Genesis. Go to Genesis, chapter, chapter, uh, so, as I was saying, the reason why y'all wrote things down is because y'all were too stupid to remember anything. You couldn't keep nothing in your mind. Go ahead and read that, what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 9. And the, and the Lord, and the Most High, called unto Adam. No, no, no. Two. 
the book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 8. And they heard a voice of the Most High. They heard the voice of the Most High. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They read that the Most High was in the garden. Read. They heard the voice of the Most High. So we heard the voice of our Creator. We didn't need something written on a wall. That's why y'all stuff predates ours, because we was there, and the proof of it is because y'all will admit that y'all took us into captivity. Right. So damn sure we had to be there. So y'all don't predate us. Egyptology don't predate us. We was there too. We just were smart enough to remember the things that our father told us. That's right. We didn't have to write our stuff down. Okay? But now we fell into captivity, and now we write things down for a reason. What is the reason that we write things down? But read that. Go ahead. Read that again. And they heard the voice of the Most High walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So we heard the voice of our Father, our Creator, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Right, right. So then why do we have a book now? Why do we have this book? That's the question that everybody want to know. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Second, is it first? That's it. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22. For the Jews require a sign. That's the reason why we have a Bible right now. Because all of you brothers and sisters that's out here right now, if I told you the Bible says don't eat pork, what you want me to do? You want me to show it to you? You require a sign. Show me that. You can't prove that to me. I want you to show it to me. So that's the reason why we have this Bible. That's right. Because our people require a sign. You can't tell you nothing unless you show it to us. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's what the Bible teaches. <laughs> so that's the only reason why we have the Bible. The, the Bible. Uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. A new heart also. 27. And I will put my spirit within you. He will put his spirit in us. That way we don't need to have a book. Read. And cause you to walk in my statue. And cause us to walk in his statue. That's right. Read. And ye shall keep my judgments. And keep his judgments. And do them. And guess what? When he does that, that would mean that we won't be like you Egyptologists that got to go. First of all, none of you damn Egyptologists can read anything that's on them that's damn right, walls. That's right, that's right. That's we, as Hebrew Israelites, we speak Hebrew. We read Hebrew. Right. Shema, Yashin Allah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh Akkad. That means here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. 